Do you want to do an experiment with me? Um, I don't want to have to go out and buy more of this beach glass paint that I love the color of. Um, and also, I want a thicker version of it, so I'm going to try to make it myself. Welcome to my channel. This is Darcy's Misadventures with Mixed Media. And we're going to try to mix some paints today and see what we get. So, beach glass, I would say, is a light blue, but like a little bit muted. And um, I just, I love it. So, obviously, we've got blue involved. Um, so, I thought I'd try this light blue permanent. Um, even though it's not close to the color. So, and, and we're taking a big chance here because that's a big glob of that blue, but I don't love this blue as it is. Also, I'm going to add some white. And to get the muted color, what I do know is you use a color that is opposite on the color wheel. So, that would be orange. So, I'm going to put some orange over there and mix them together and see what we end up with and I will not be mean and use a scraper I will use a brush what I mean by that is I myself do not love the oh that is way too much orange okay let's add way more blue so yeah um what I've learned is to get the muted version of a color is you add just a little bit and obviously that orange was more than a little bit um, of the color that is opposite on the color wheel and also if I had used a lighter orange since I have a light blue that also may have been more effective we are getting this is very close to that color now um, although that color is lighter so I will add some white or some buff, whatever, whatever it is I can find is <laughs> what I'm going to add. Let's see. I have unbleached titanium, so I'm going to use that and maybe also put that off to the side and just bring it in to get the, oh, there we go. I do like this color though. I don't love this color. I love this color. And all I did was add a little bit of orange to get a blue that I really love. It's still darker than that one, which I'm okay with because I can always lighten it, um, you know, af as I'm using it. And then I'm going to have to figure out how to get that, use up all this paint then. That is really close. Hmm. That is good. I wish I knew what the proportions were on that. Did anybody pay attention to that for me? No? Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add some more blue because I'm pretty sure I need more blue. Can you believe we started with these two colors, these three colors, and got that? That is the magic of paint. All right, let me mix this up. Where's a credit card or something? Now I'm just going to use my bone folder because I don't know where anything else is. And I don't want to use, I'm just going to mix them all in now. And uh, then try to get it back in that bottle, this bottle. I'm just going to mix that in too. Definitely going to need more blue. Much more blue. I didn't want to waste the orange. So, you know. Uh, I think this would be easier with a credit card than with this phone folder. You know, it's because I don't like the sound of, of metal on, um, it's way farther out than I want it to be. Uh, metal on glass would really irritate me a lot, so... There we go. We're getting closer. Need more blue. Or just use your fingers because that's fun. I don't know. This is what we do here. Really, I should not do that. But um, And then I'm going to get it scooped back into the bottle the best that I can. I don't mind if it's a little bit darker than that, but it's definitely this blue that I like. Alright, I'm going to add... That looks really close. All right, I might add a little bit more of the cream. And because I've got that orange on the bottom, a little bit more of the blue just to counteract the orange I'm going to be picking up. Mix that up and scoop it into the bottle. And that is going to probably be using my um, paint, my metal scraper and you don't have to heal there. I'll be back. Okay, when I was over at my shelf, I've got this uh, mix of brown, random mixes of brown in here. Um, there's probably about this much in here. And I have, I had, where'd it go? I had a 
that a purple that I don't absolutely love and will probably never use it all. So I thought, well, why don't I add some of that purple in here to the brown and see what happens? Because that's what I like to do. I like to just see what happens. Well, obviously I don't hate this purple because it's almost gone. It's a purple gray. Um, but it's not as deep as I'd like it to be. So I thought, well, maybe I will just go ahead and put it in here, add whatever other colors I want to add to make it be more better. Whoops. And just see, I mean, I probably need to add some reds and blues and who knows what else, like more purpley colors that make purple to the maybe a little black. I don't know. We're just going to do the brown and black first and see what we get. So I'm putting about a one to one ratio in here, I think is what I'm ending up with. And also this brown was like really liquidy and I didn't love that. Um, I still have a little bit of that left. I don't, I didn't need to like actually finish it, finish it. And uh, I'll shake that up real quick. Sometimes shaking it doesn't work as great. and You got to find a stick to stick in there. Um, I want to give you an idea of what the original color looked like. So that's the original purple. And now it looks a little bit more like eggplant. And I love eggplant. Eggplant is a color I can play with a lot more than that brighter purple. Nothing wrong with that purple. I'm just more likely to use that eggplanty color. And uh, so yeah, now that's what that one is. So now maybe we can play. The reason I wanted more of, of this one especially is because when I did the mixed media labels the other day, that was the color that I liked the most that I had used. So I want to play with that some more. Uh, making some painty paper kind of a deal, kind of things, I think. Um, plus watching Gail this morning doing the Rachel's Weekly Challenge. I want to do something with that, so I'm just like, hmm, do I, want to use, I just want to find a book to use to do some mark making in. Which book do I want? That one has delicate pages. That's, this one has less pages, so that's, I won't have to cover as many. <laughs> that's, that's how I look at it. Um, and also is a little bit shinier, so I'm going to, um, get some pages falling out, I'll just take those out. I am possibly going to put a coat of gesso on some of these just a really light coat just to push that back a little bit on some of the pages or maybe not I don't know uh, let's see Rachel was using markers I think I'm gonna start with just some paint and uh, make some collage papers okay now what the reason that it's easier to do markers if you're doing it in a book like this is you don't have to wait for the pages to uh, dry so, yeah, my colors weren't perfectly mixed, but that's okay. Which is, whoops, well, that's where we're starting, whoops. I just do big circles. Not circles, just blobs. They're not even circles. They're just whatever comes out when I do this brush thing. Because, why not? It's a color I like. So, you know, if I use colors I like, colors that I'm going to use in projects... Um, then that is good. I was trying to do more of a, um, yeah, I've got too much paint on here is the problem. All right, let's get some of the paint off. A little bit of orange in there. That's okay. It's, it's hardly, it's just, it's actually looking more rusty than orange, which is kind of cool. It's kind of cool, actually. Some of these are bigger than others. We don't care. We're not going for perfection. I was watching Laura, the half-ass class, the half-ass claster, the half-ass crafter. And she said, all perfectionism is, is noticing flaws. And I don't want to be a person that just only notices flaws. I want to be a person that notices the positive. Because um, I'm married to somebody that notices the negative, And I don't like it. I'm always trying to encourage him to notice the positive more so. Alright. So, uh, yeah, that's going to have to dry. Give me a minute. All right, I have a smaller brush this time so that I can maybe do some brush marks that make a little more, a little bit more, um, less, less chaotic. I mean, nothing wrong with a little chaos. Sometimes chaos can bring quite the creativity. I'm not worried about them bringing it being the same size, 
might not even end up on the same piece you know it's for collage paper or some people call it collage fodder some people have a problem with that word I don't have a problem with that word because um, you know fodder is food for animals and collage fodder is just food for us to use for our art so I'm, I'm embracing it I'm choosing to embrace the word you do you boo so, I should just be quiet so I can fast through, fast forward through some of this bits, huh? Are you in? Can, yeah, I think you are. I think I'm really close in too, which may be good. You don't have to line them up like this. You can um, totally do wonky and out of order and just don't even have to totally pay attention. Now, the positive thing about using the markers is you can do that sitting in front of the TV. Um, but the fun thing about using paint and a brush is you're just really random in your shapes. There's no way to not be random, really. And if you do a nice thin coat, you can move on to the next page fairly easily. Um, I'm also going to use some Posca pens. So, you know, best of both worlds with that. With a, a marker and a paint, paint, paint marker, paint pen. So partly what I want to do is just have some papers that will be fun to play with um, in anything I make, but especially for there is the um, uh, July postcard play that Carrie the Crafter is hosting for July, and I will definitely be doing some uh, some collaging, and so I want to have some fun papers to work with. So, longer lines, I know, not, not so much fun. And this lighter color muted blue is going to give us more lower contrast for a background. And, and sometimes that's what you want for a background. You want a lower contrast. It's not bad to have a higher contrast. You're just going to have higher contrast and have to be really careful about what you put on that background. But like a really bold, thick stamp could work really well in a busier, higher contrast background. So let's just move on to the to the uh, the higher contrast with these this uh, what is this called the the eggplant kind of color that we got when we mixed the gray purple with the um. I don't know if I like it when I do it one line and then the next line or what. Uh, the gray, purple, and the brown. The random, just different browns that were in there. I totally encourage you guys to just mix colors and see what you get, see what you like. And then play with your brushes and your colors on your paper and see what you get with your lines and whatnot. Uh, like that does X's like that. And what is this? I think it's not a filbert brush. It's a rounded tip, round tip brush. So that one I did with this round tip brush. Uh, the next page, I'm still going to do X's, but I'm going to use an angled flat brush. I don't know, is that what it's called? Does, these don't tell me what they're called. And even if they did, um, good luck reading it because my stuff gets covered with paint. That's just, that's just the way it is. Some things will never change. So different brushes are going to give you different looks. You don't have to do giant X's. You can do them the same direction every time. You can do them bigger, smaller. Uh, not on camera so that the uh, doesn't look like you're getting poked in the face with the uh, really long brush. Boop, boop, boop. Sorry. Hey, speaking of boop, did you boop that like button? That's Nate. Uh, Nate, what's his Nate? I don't know. He's a, a vid, he's a guy that helps you build your YouTube channel, kind of a channel. Nate Black, is that it? Oh, Mariah will say. She knows, she's the one that told me about him. Um, he always says, boop the like button. Mariah says, uh, hit that thumbsy upsy. I just did that backwards, eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay, so that's with the one brush, that's with a different brush. You get a little bit of a different look. Both are good. And like, if that blobby bit really bothered you that much, you just don't use that piece. Not a big deal. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? We use, this is the angled, nope, that's not the angled brush. I wanted to use the angled brush and see about getting the, um, little blobbies that are a little bit more kind of squarish. Just to, uh, 
have something back there. Ooh, I do like this purple much better now. Just adding the brown. How now, brown cow? So, what kind of things do you guys like to put on your... Do you guys even use um, paper, collage papers? Like, do you make your own collage papers? Or do you only use digitals or a mix of everything? Or do you just use uh, whatever you can get online? Uh, scrapbook paper? Uh, just plain book page? I don't know. What's your favorite thing to use for collage paper? I'm really having fun with this, by the way. And of course, if you don't have paints, you can use markers, inks, you can use your stamps. Uh, just going over the pages just gives you a, something kind of subtle in the background with the writing. And then gives you something more bold um, or low contrast, depending on, on what you do. And it's just kind of just kind of fun. You can even do some stripes. They, can, they don't have to be straight. If you want them to be straight, you can use a ruler. I wouldn't, because that just seems like overkill. Um, for me, I am, what I am doing though, is I'm putting my focus at the bottom of the page where I want the line to end. So that hopefully that's where my line will end. That, that's the hope. Uh, let's see, do we want to kind of make a plaid? So like my focus is here when I'm drawing these lines so that I can potentially have it be fairly straight. Of course, going this way is a little easier because I've got the words to follow. That helps keep it a little bit straighter too. Come to think of that. And distance, uh, they don't have to be totally equidistant. They're just fun. And that, you know, makes for something fun. Um, let's see. Oh, and then you keep seeing blobby knits on blobby knits on it because I'm just kind of blotting it uh, with another paper to get the wettest of the wettest off of there. So that uh, and it's not always happening easily every time. This one actually, I did a nice thin layer. Well, it obviously wasn't totally dry because I just moved it. That's okay. I mean, you could do that too. You could while it's still a little wet, kind of like brush water down there, and it'll move the color a little bit. What do I mean? Okay, well, let's do this faster. I'm gonna go just do some bold, boldish stripes. Yes, I've been adulting today. That's not been so fun. Had to do the grocery shopping, had to, had to figure out my son's prescriptions. Because they keep canceling them every time. Of course, this is going to take a lot lot longer to uh, dry now. Uh, where's my paper? Oh, uh, stop saying ah. Ooh, I actually like what it's doing. I just kind of want to let that dry and let that, let that move around. You know what I'm saying? I like what's happening there. I really do. Now I kind of want to do that like with less dark and more light on a page. Let me dry that and I'll be back. Okay, so these really wet pieces that are not picking up, that are taking too long to dry for my patience level, I'm just picking those up with a paper towel, which is also giving me another variation of something happening in the back there. Um, because the paint wasn't dry, so it's lifting it up. Because it is acrylic paint, so you know, once it's dry, it's permanent, but until it's dry, it, it's not so permanent. Also, if you're gonna make your paper that wet, you might wanna put something under it. Maybe not have to do it if it's in the book because it's more likely to tear out someday. Um, so that is just interesting to me. That just is full of lovely interest. Let's go ahead and, what was I doing? I wanted to just do less, less of the pur purple because I wanted, I wanted it to move more, but it's super dry is the problem, so. I at least need them to be wet on there. Or drop, rock, and just, yeah, there we go. That was lovely sound. Sounds brought to you by Naughty Paint. There we go. Just, I know, I said don't leave it in the book. You're going to end up with issues, but, but that's all right. I'm going to kind of move that around a little bit 
and I get a different look if I were to just let it sit there and dry than using the because using the heat dryer it, I, it that moves it around um, if I just leave that to sit should I do that I mean you won't get the video today you'll get it tomorrow because I'll have to leave it overnight probably so yeah maybe I will okay and here it is dry it dried overnight don't worry about that paint but see that paint right there yeah that'll, I got a little scraper thing that'll scrape that off so those are just some of the painty pages I've done using acrylic paint. You can, of course, use watercolor paint. You can use your Distress inks or any other inks you have. Just remember if it's water-soluble and you use uh, water on it, you're going to get movement. Uh, but, like, acrylic paints, you won't get movement. And, see, I don't love this, so I have a way of fixing that when I do leaves. But, um, this one I use markers. I have some oil permanent oil dual tip oil markers I don't know the brand I got them at five and below uh, for most of those I did un unintentionally use my Tombow which is water based and so it does move with water and usually it makes a mess on my hands but it didn't today I don't know why this paint didn't come off um, I've washed my hands several times <laughs> so um, these are just some marks this is actually I think a Russian letter which is what these kind of are too Kind of, sort of, but not really. Um, but it's it's one of the shapes I really like. So, And then some leaves, a little swirl on the end. These are fragile papers. Just more circles and yellow leaves. Okay, and then for these leaves, because I found out if I try to start on the edge of the page, uh, it's not as random. So I have a way to do the leaves so they're a little more random. Um, you know, where I, I draw the, the lines on first. I was watching, I don't remember who I was watching, but one of the people you can watch, it might have been Debbie, my Vagabond Life is where I might have watched to get those. Uh, so yeah, just different shapes. If, if there's, like, you want to do Greek letters, you can do Greek letters. You want to do Russian letters, you can do Russian letters. Uh, and then this one is just kind of chevron, but uh, wonky, and the way I made it wonky is I'd go this way, and then I'd go that way. Because I, I wanted some wonkiness. I want to try that with some paints, too. Uh, some of these are, like, super light. It's very low contrast. I don't know. Can you even see that there's the green on there? It's a really light green color. Because uh, some of these are kind of like... They're oil markers, but they are really light, like alcohol markers. Alcohol markers, if you want to be able to see the writing through, are good. So this is where they're filled in. That's where they're not filled in. Numbers. You could do numbers. Uh, or just X's. Circles. Vary your sizes of your circles. Even more fun. Uh, leaves going every which direction. Leaves going every which direction. Flowers. Just cover it with flowers. That's fun. This is just ideas. Uh, I'll show you how I did that page, too. Because that's a little bit more tricky. Um, and then the pods or leaves or whatever. And uh, I think I was watching Debbie, my Vagabond Life, and she was doing some collage fodder to cut out. And so I was like, oh, what if I put those on the background? They got kind of big. Little plus signs. And more plus signs. I skipped some of these pages with the uh, squares because I might want to do something different on there. Just squiggles. Squiggles that touch each other. More squiggles, even more squiggles, uh, sort of dragon scales, doo, doo, doo. and then open circles, and then I was trying to figure out if I like them closer together or more space in between them. I'm not sure which I like. So for the leaves, let me just use this one because it's darker and easier to see, um, and I want it thin. I'm going to use the, 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 the um, fine tip. Now, this is a Tombow marker. It is water-based. It will move when it gets wet, if it gets wet. So, um, instead of starting from the bottom with my leaves, I just kind of made some little C-shapes all over the page. And then added leaves to those. They can be a different size. They can go off the page. It's all good in the neighborhood. And then I can either make those big leaves or I can just add my little ovals for leaves. They can be big or small. There's no right or wrong. 
and you can like kind of double end them so you can't tell where it starts and where it ends like that you can make your leads further apart closer together there's there's no right or wrong but yeah I was struggling with I wanted to start on the edge of the page and how did I keep from doing that this was how that was how I kept from double ending it I mean, from, you know, I am double ending it. That's how I kept from getting, whoops, something like that is by just doing my curves in the middle. And then for my daisy type things, and I found out that I actually kind of like this idea. Um, so I do a bunch of swirls on a page, different sizes, different from each other. Bigger, smaller, depends on what I'm looking for. I don't know. I'm doing these closer together like I did on the other page. Because uh, I kind of liked the look of where the petals on the flowers got interrupted by a squiggle. Just a random squiggle. So now I'm going to pick one and just start making my petals. Just doing my petals. And then find another one on the page where I want to put petals, maybe this one. See, you don't, it's, it's not too hard. Just do your circle and use your petals. It's, it's not too hard. But when I hit a squiggly line, I just act like that squiggly line is in front of the flower. And then the, I'll make more flowers where there are squiggly lines, but, or the middle part doesn't touch. A, um, like this one could be a big flower here. So like this one won't become a flower. That's just going to stay a squiggly line. And so this one also will me remain a squiggly line. It's a little bit more tricky when you're having to like pretend like uh, it goes behind something. So see that one? It won't become a flower. It'll just be in front and that one too. This one can be a flower. It's just a look that I liked when the squiggly lines went over it. You don't have to draw the extra squiggly lines, but uh, having the centers helps you to make your petals, if that makes sense. I don't think that would go past that petal. This would. And your flowers don't have to be perfect. They actually probably look better when they're not perfect. And let's see, this one could become a flower. So yeah, this background was one of my favorites that I made. Nothing new, nothing fancy. Just real simple. Um, flowers basically let's see and then I can go ahead and put a new one over here so I can add another flower up there there we go and I probably put one here too There we go. And uh, and I like how the other swirls that were there ahead of time just look like they're sitting on top of the flowers. So I could have flower come down from there too, or even just a squiggle or whatever. So yeah, that's how I did those. What else did I say I'd show you? Oh, these. 
Uh, I just needed to decide if I would like more. You just do random circles. Might use the brush just so I can go a little bit faster. And then if you want more space between them, just put more space between them. And then fill in as you go if you want to. Or you can fill in afterwards. Just random circles. And then you can fill it, fill in the spaces in between. And then you can even come back in later and put tiny little red or black dots on all the spaces in between. So if I don't pay much attention to the ones next to it, it's a little bit more random. Otherwise, I feel like, oh, I don't want two big ones next to each other. But, you know, two big ones can be next to each other. It's not that big a deal. Two medium ones can be next to each other. Two small ones. It's okay. Of course, if you want more space between them, just draw your circles further apart. Like we could have this big amount of space in between. But this is another of these open circles. That's a look that I like too. It's, it's a, let's see, there we go. It's a fun look on a page. See, these are all kind of close together because I'm glad I could make them look further apart by just filling in those spaces. Oops, those didn't get filled in. Instead of leaving tiny circles. See, and it still looks fun even if you didn't do it perfectly. Oops. See, I missed some spots. It's okay. That's why it's easier to do it as you're drawing them because otherwise, like me, you will miss a bunch of spots. <laughs> and you can go back in and kind of fix your circles to make them more round, but they don't have to be perfectly round. And then, of course, let's see, there's the one I saw somebody doing the other day, which was basically you do a circle and then you have a wider part on that circle. It could be on one side of that circle or two sides of that circle and also connect those there's no undo and you can leave your spaces in between because you've got your wider but it just looks like a bunch of wonky circles just kind of attached to one another your wide side doesn't have to be on the same side every time. And it could be on both sides when you feel like it. It's just basically a wonky circle. And the more wonky you are with them, well, for me, the more wonky they are, the more I like them. Does that make sense? The less I don't want them perfectly round. Like already I'm like, eh, these are too round. So if you want them less round, then I guess you just hold your pen further up. Uh, no, that didn't work. Well, for the inside it did. Got a little more wonky on the inside. Um, there you go. That might work a little bit better. So the less control you have, the more likely you are to get that weird hmm, wonkiness. If you want the wonkiness. There we go. That's that's kind of what I like too, is just some little bit of wonky, not perfect um, circles. See, those will be easier to fill in after I'm holding the pen more normal. <laughs> it's kind of hard to do when I'm holding it like this. This is more to get that wonky shape, holding it at the end like that. I'm gonna go ahead and connect those. You can leave empty spaces, it's okay. I have an easier time doing wonky insides than outsides. And then, you know, look like it's a continuous pattern. If you can make it look like it's a continuous pattern that goes off the page, then you do that. There you go. Easy peasy. And then I'll just go through later and fill in the spots. So that's another wonky circle. And of course, X's, pluses, minuses, any of the things. Um, so I can't remember what this letter is. I think it's like a Z. Um, this one that I was making, which is kind of a backwards C, a line, and a frontward C. That's one of my favorite 
my favorite Russian letters to draw. Probably see it better if I use the Tombow. This one's not very dark. Because when I learned Russian, I learned how to do it in cursive. <laughs> so it's actually hard for me to um, to read printed weirdly. And then, whoops, well, that was messed up. So then you could also even just close them up and just, but then, you know, you want your line to be all the way through and you don't want it to be, um, you don't want it to be like that, okay? You have to put your line all the way through. <laughs> Otherwise, you look like you're drawing rude stuff. So that's a backwards P and a frontwards P together, basically, is that one. Um, and then this one, if I do it right, I think that's, yeah. I like the dot first, though. So, like, um, like, yeah, to be I love you would be I love you. So, yeah, would be, I guess, the I. I don't remember. It's been 35 plus years. I just like that shape. So, you're just doing a loop and then a line up. It's not exact. But it's just a shape I like. And I don't know what this one is. But for some reason, <laughs> I like that shape a little bit too. It's almost like a one connected to an O. Or says ho, 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 ho. Uh, and then also, you know, maybe Greek letters. I had an idea. You know, I was like, well, Greek letters might be fun. Because, you know, you've got, I don't know how to draw it. But, you know, your delta sign. Not your omega sign is what I'm trying to say. Or your delta. Which is just a triangle, right? Um, I don't remember what any of the other ones are. Is that beta? And what's this one? I don't know. But that's on there. I could just repeat some of the symbols that are on the page. I kept seeing this one in the book. Didn't know that had anything to do with trigonometry. But yeah, see this this letter's in here. This one that is the uh, I don't remember what letter that is. What it sounds like. I don't remember. Somebody in here probably knows Russian. Well Heather does. Uh let's see. You can just do that. I'm just see the line across helps you keep your Well, somewhat straight. They're not straight. It's okay. It doesn't matter. And you could do like, I think what Rachel Roxy Creations was doing is she was doing like a section of colors so that um, she'd know. In her, and, and in the book, in the book is part of the, uh, the secret here. So then when you're looking for something, you could just flip through your book, find the color you want for the collage you're working on and use it. So I love, I love, I, that's what I like. I love that idea about the book. And these pages base pretty much have to be used for collage because they're a little bit on the fragile side. Um, is there anything else that I was going to show? You? Oh, the swirlies. I already have that color a lot. Let me find another color I can do for swirlies. What color did I not have? I think she was red. The Stadler. Okay, and then I try to remember to put a paper in here because a lot of these markers do go through. So you can start on the edge, but you don't have to, but I usually end up. And then you just connect your swirls. You can have them be as big or as small as you want. You can, I like the varied sizes actually. Just keep going with your swirls. I mean, some of you are like, well, yeah, duh, that's easy. I knew that. And some of you might be like, oh, that's how you get that look. I don't assume anything about anybody. Whoops. It's okay. They don't have to be perfect. Just guess where it ends on the top there. And then you could start a new one on the bottom here if you wanted to. And you can make them closer together like that. Have more be like circular like that. Or you could keep doing them like this, more open. You could fill in these little spots if you wanted to. You don't have to. You just, 
keep going and having fun with it. You don't have to go in a straight line. You can come back around. See, you can have that touch or you can have it not touch. Depends on the look you're going for. So, um, and then the other thing is watercolors and stenciling. I want to do some stenciling in here because stenciling is like super easy. You don't have to think about it um, too much. That's white. I don't want white. White's not super helpful. Uh, you can do neutral colors, dark colors. Y you may want to stick with permanent. And uh, red, nothing's permanent in red. Um, every time I've tried, it, it just doesn't. And so stencils, there you go, really fast a page is done. And you can vary, you know, the depth of your colors on there too. And stamping, same thing, really simple and easy. You just grab some stamps and you do your, what is this one? Oh, that could work. And uh, numbers on numbers, that'll be fun. You don't even have to have it perfectly on there. You just, let's go sideways. That had black on it so it ended up being a little bit more and so stamping gets it done fast as well and you just added some color on there and interest yes I know some people don't like their their text to go two different directions you'll survive <laughs> you will survive let's see let's try this Chianti which is gonna be the same color that I got with that other thing and do some more I had a stencil here a minute ago I just I saw it like the swirly one, the, the, the flourish one. It was in my line of sight. Oh, wow. Um, let's see. Ugh, this one's not in the shop yet. Sorry. I'm not sure when it's coming in the shop, but, and I've cut it up. You don't have to cut it up. I just figured it was sitting there. I'm going to kind of alternate it a little bit. So if you have like the uh, the strippers from Pam Artist Studio, you just do rows of those. So that's fun. Strippers, they're just stencils that are like strips, you know, kind of like that. So those are some ideas to create some collage fodder for your collaging endeavors. And I will be doing some more. Uh, you could also take tissue paper do stamping, stenciling, mark making. I've tried looking for mark making ideas on um, online and there's not a lot. I mean, there's videos, but there's not a lot of like still pictures. Um, but you could, and it's a good way to practice your brushes and see, see how uh, different brushes work with different paints. Um, and also your Posca markers are also a good, I really like the, uh, this is an easy one. And I like how it, how it looks in collage and in backgrounds is these uh just uh nesty circles I guess you would call them that's what PM Artist Studio calls them and you get to an edge of the page you just kind of go like that <laughs> they can touch they don't have to touch go off the page is always nice you can make it look better when you go off the page than that but that's all right there you go yeah that's one of my favorites um, and also you don't necessarily want it to be perfect. So what I'll do is I will sometimes hold my pen like I did with those other circles. If I don't want it perfect and go a different direction, like I start down at the bottom here, but on this one, I'll start at the top or I'll start there just to make my X's not look all the same because I think they're more interesting that way. And then I'm not looking for perfection, so I'm not gonna get upset when it's not perfect. Because, you know, I'll be more annoyed at finding and seeing the perfections than if I had just not done it perfect, not tried to make it perfect in the first place. I'm okay with if it doesn't look perfect because I didn't try to make it look perfect. Does that make any sense? I, it does to some people I know because I've, I've heard other people say the same thing just in better words. So, I don't know why I lined them up like that. See, that's what they look at, like lined up like that, but you don't have to. You can, and when I've seen like graffiti with X's, the X's are like wonky and never perfect. 
and they still look really cool. Not that graffiti should look cool because it, it's a crime. Don't don't graffiti and do that crime business. You got art supplies. You can graffiti on your paper. Um. So yeah, and if you really want things to be seen, you don't have to like break the law to paint on things. You can just um put it on Instagram and on your Facebook wall instead. And people can see your art. T tag your own wall on Facebook. <laughs> I know I'm I'm not I'm preaching to the choir because y'all aren't the ones doing the tagging things anyway. I'm pretty sure there's no graffiti artists watching my page. Except maybe once because it says mixed media and be like, oh what's this gal? But then they watch me and they're like, oh she's weird. Too weird for me. Some sometimes ooh, Y's would work too. I mean, why not a Y? Do some upside down Y's. It's just a shape. <clears throat> Especially if you don't do it as a perfect Y. Now they're instead of Y's, they're a little bit more like a football. And you don't have to connect them, or you can connect them, you know. It's just a pattern. What is your favorite type pattern to use when you are... Didn't I already ask a question? Sorry, answer both questions or pick a question to answer. Uh, what pattern do you like to use when you doodle on your background pages? Do you like circles? Do you like squares? Rectangles? Are you like, ooh, this Y upside down thing is kind of cool, you know? What, what do you like? Just the more you do it, the more free you get with it and the more ideas pop into your head. Like this idea, I didn't, I didn't think to do it. Like like I was thinking letters because, you know, I've been doing more letters. But then I was like, oh, look, if I do them like this, you could do this with any letter, really. And uh, it goes really fast. Of course, stamping and stenciling goes really fast. So if you have no confidence or you just really, really, really don't like what you draw, um, just use stamps and stencils. It's good. You'll still have some good background. And you don't have to use the same color every on all of them. I did some rainbow ones that I that I actually loved. And uh, they came out really nice. So, that is it. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you have a delightful day. Love you.